Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, has arrested and arraigned four women including a nursing mother for allegedly assaulting and biting some of its operatives to prevent the arrest of a suspect in Kaduna State. EFCC in a statement issued few hours ago indicated that the suspect which the women allegedly aided the escape had jumped bail severally and avoided being served her charges for arraignment. EFCC in the report said the EFCC personnel overpowered the four suspected women and arrested them for obstruction of justice without any violence. According to EFCC, the four women pleaded not guilty to the charges and the court remanded three of them to Kaduna Correctional Prison and the nursing mother to EFCC custody till May 2, 2024 to hear their bail application. The EFCC news release reads in quotes as presented below, the Kaduna Zonal Command of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC on Wednesday, April 24, 2024 arraigned four suspects before Justice the Ebelo of the Kaduna State High Court, Kaduna. They were brought for alleged obstruction of lawful duty and assault against officers of the commission. The suspects are Rukaya Ahmed Mustafa, Sadia Usman Mohammed, Amira Uthman and Nafisa Tusman. They were arraigned on one count separate charges bordering on obstruction of lawful duty. The one count charge against Sadia Usman Mohammed reads that you, Sadia Usman Mohammed, on or about the 15th of April 2024 at Kaduna, within the jurisdiction of the Kaduna State High Court, willfully obstructs officers of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, while carrying out an official assignment, effecting a lawful arrest at number. 13 Jaffa organized our streets, Riga Chukon, Kaduna, and thereby committed an offense contrary to Section 30 Act 2 of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Establishment Act 2004 and punishable under Section 30 Act 2 B of the same Act. All the four suspects pleaded not guilty to the charges when they were read to them, prompting Prosecution Counsel, K.S. Ogunla Day to pray for a trial dead to bring the witnesses to court. He also sought the remand of the defendants in Kaduna Correctional Center. Justice Belu, after listening to all counsels, remanded three of the suspects at the Kaduna Correctional Center while Sadia Usman Mohammed, who was a nursing mother, was remanded in EFCC custody. He adjourned the case to May 2, 2024, for hearing of their bail applications. The suspects were arrested for obstructing officers of the Kaduna command of the EFCC while making efforts to arrest one Hadiza Usman, who had jumped bail severally and avoided being served her charges for arraignment. While trying to effect the arrest, the four suspects openly attacked operatives of the commission and assaulted three of them, dragging and pulling their uniforms and biting another operative close to his collarbone and another on his left hand respectively. Despite the confrontation by the suspects, the officers maintained discipline and professionalism, subdued and arrested the suspects with no violence at all. It would be recalled that on April 17, 2024, after Kogi State Governor, Usman Ududu allegedly aided the escape and prevented the FCC operatives from arresting the former State Governor, Yahaya Bello, the anti-corruption police issued a statement warning the general public that it will no longer tolerate any act of obstruction to its oppressions. It also said any offender of such crime risked five years imprisonment in line with laws of Nigeria. The statements and other press releases issued in connection with the step and fraud case leveled against the former governor, Yahaya Bello, are presented below. We will no longer tolerate obstruction of our oppressions. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission wishes to warn members of the public that it is a criminal offense to obstruct officers of the commission from carrying out their lawful duties. Section 30 Act 2 A B of the EFCC Establishment Act makes it an offense to prevent officers of the commission from carrying out their lawful duties. Culprits risk a jail term of not less than five years. This warning becomes necessary against the background of the increasing tendency by persons and groups under investigation by the commission to take the laws into their hands by recruiting folks to obstruct lawful oppressions of the EFCC. On several occasions, operatives of the Commission have had to exercise utmost restraint in the face of such provocation to avoid the breakdown of law and order. Regrettably, such disposition is being construed as a sign of weakness. The Commission, therefore, warns that it will henceforth not tolerate any attempt by any person or organization to obstruct its oppression as such will be met with appropriate punitive actions. 
Alleged 80 points to billion naira's fraud, EFCC sells Yahya Bello his charges. Former Kogi State Governor, Yahya Adosa Bello was on Tuesday, April 23, 2024, served his charges through his counsel, Abdul Wahab Muhammad, SN. After Justice Emeka White of the Federal High Court, Maitama Abuja ruled that the defendant should be served through his counsel, especially as he failed to appear before the court yet again. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is prosecuting. Yahya Bello alongside his Ali Bello, Dalda Suleiman and Abdul Salam Yudu on 19 count charges bordering on money laundering to the tune of 80 nairas, 246, 470,000 and 89 points at Atkobo. At Tuesday's sitting, Bello's counsel, Adeola Adedipe, S.A.N., prayed the court to quash the arrest warrant granted the commission against Bello, arguing that Tuesday's substituted service to the defendant through his counsel Abdul Wahab Muhammad, S.A.N., has invalidated the arrest warrant. The court is expected to do justice at all times. A warrant of arrest cannot be hanging on Bello's neck when we are in this court. It appears to us that the defendant will not get justice because the court granted a warrant of arrest before service, he said. However, prosecution counsel, Kemi Pinheiro, S.A.N., in response, urged the court to decline hearing on any motion from Bello's legal team until the defendant is physically present in court for his arraignment. The stage we are in now is to determine the whereabouts of the defendant. He cannot be in his house while the trial proceeds without him coming here to take his plea. My lord, this is a criminal matter, not a civil matter. He must come and take his plea. It is a matter of over 80 billion nairas. All these applications by the defendant are to prevent his arraignment and frustrate the commencement of trial, he said. After hearing both counsels, Justice O'White adjourned ruling on the defense's application, seeking a revocation of the arrest warrant on Bello till May 10, 2024. Kaoyahaya Bello declined the FCC's invitation for interrogation Olukoyede. The executive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ola Olukoyede has disclosed that he made personal efforts to invite a former governor of Kogi State, Yahaya Aduza Bello, to respond to investigations regarding his alleged involvement in money laundering to the tune of 80 billion, 246 million, 470,000 and 89 naira, 88 kobo. Olukoyede stated this in Abuja on Tuesday, April 23, 2024, while addressing media executives at the corporate headquarters of the EFCC. According to him, he had a telephone conversation with Bello offering him ample opportunities to present himself for interrogation by investigators. Of the EFCC, on my honor, I put a call to him to honor him as a former governor. He said, I can't come, claiming that a certain lady has surrounded the EFCC with over 100 journalists to embarrass or intimidate him and all that stuff. I said, if that is your fear, I will make you come directly to my floor. I will invite my operatives to interrogate you in my own office. What could be more honorable than that? Do you know what he said? Can't they come to my village? My director of investigations also sent a message to him, he said. The EFCC's boss said he was worried at the report of larceny available to the EFCC concerning the former governor. A sitting governor, because he knew he was going, he moved money directly from the government's accounts to a bureau they changed to pay his children's school fees in advance, $720,000 in anticipation that he was going to leave government's house, he said. Olukoyede also disclosed that the EFCC, in its bid to ensure the safety and stability of the foreign exchange market, has uncovered a new fraudulent scheme called P2P, peer-to-peer -peer trading scheme. The platform, according to him, is operating outside the official banking and financial corridors, with more than 300 accounts linked to it already frozen by the EFCC. He reaffirmed the commitment of the Commission to the economic growth and development of the country, promising that the EFCC would not relent in the exercise of its mandate. He told the media executives that the Commission has recovered more than 120 billion naras from fraudsters within six months and secured more than 1,300 convictions. He called on Nigerians to be more dedicated to the nation, insisting that patriotic Nigerians should offer more support to the EFCC because the commission is crucial to the growth and development of Nigeria. If you support the EFCC, you are working for the growth of Nigeria.
We all have stakes in the well-being of our nation, he said. AFCC denies disobeying court order on Yahya Bello. Against the backdrop of arguments and counter-arguments on whether the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, has disobeyed a court order concerning the botched arrest of former Governor of Kuigi State, Yahya Aduzabelu, the Commission has denied disobeying any court order in this regard. In a press statement signed by the EFCC's Acting Director, Public Affairs, Wilson Wujaren, the Commission clearly pointed out that though Belu sought refuge in a fundamental rights enforcement action through an order granted by Justice Issa Jamil Abdullahi of the Kogi State High Court, the order did not vitiate or nullify an order made by the Federal High Court for the arrest of the former governor for the purpose of his arraignment. The enrolled order of the Kogi State High Court only granted an order to enforce Belu's right to personal liberty and freedom of movement. It didn't preclude the Federal High Court to make any order as it may deem just in the determination of the rights of the applicant and the respondent as may be submitted to her for consideration and determination, he said. He further stressed that the order made by the Federal High Court for the arrest of Yahya Belu for the purpose of his arraignment is not in conflict with the order of the Kogi State High Court. The case before the Federal High Court is a criminal charge which is different from the fundamental rights enforcement action that is the subject of an appeal. Ujaren pointed out that the EFCC had a shining track record in the prosecution of politically exposed persons and would continue to exercise its mandate in the overall interest of the nation. He admonished Bellu to turn himself in an answer to the charges preferred against him by the Commission. He called on all patriotic Nigerians to lend their voices in support of the Commission stressing that the EFCC will not relent in its quest to wrestle corruption to the ground. Bring in you the news in a more digital way.